in Cedar City right now. Got all my kids' bikes and stuff in here. It's looking good. This is where it's looking like at the beginning. We'll see what it looks like at the end. All road grime and everything else. But there it is. We are now going to proceed to get on the road. Stay tuned for the journey. Everything seems to be going real smooth compared to last time. I mean, very smooth. Adapters are gone, better wheels, adjusted suspension, like everything. Everything that I did down here is making this ride so much better. So stay tuned. Appreciate you guys' support. Enjoy the journey with me. Let's do this. So the worst has happened. My passenger side axle is bad. Made it to uh, about 22 miles before Nephi and uh, started getting a little bit of a wobble and then all of a sudden it got a really bad wobble. And I pulled over and passenger axle was out. Which sucks because I literally just got them replaced a week ago just for this drive. It is uh, 5.40 in the morning, by the way. The axles went out, or the axle went out uh, just before um, just before I went to sleep. It was like 11.30. I was trying to make it to Salt Lake and last night, and then it went out, my, the axle went out, so I just decided to turn it in for the night and I'll limp it in the morning, so wanted to get on the road before there was a lot of traffic and before they open so by the time they open I'm there waiting hopefully to get in and get it replaced hopefully they get a part just limping along at about 25 miles an hour all right I'm here in Nephi Nephi Utah so I made it like 200 and something miles I think just lowered this a half inch, not a half inch, sorry, a quarter inch. Lowered it another quarter inch uh, because the boot on the passenger axle came off. Everything is fine, but the boot slipped off. So I don't know if it was that clamp or what. But that's what I'm dealing with. So I just adjusted it. Lowered it a quarter inch, warranty will take care of that. And uh, so they'll replace that, align it, and then hopefully even just that quarter inch will will do it. It doesn't seem like it's it's really doing much or like it's at that much of an angle. Um, I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. Okay guys, this is where we're at today because my lower ball joints are bad. I'm a little bit frustrated about that, but this is where we're at. I'm taking off the HRG spacer and I'm going to bring this down an inch. So I'm going to have to take this, this up to about right here, which is about an inch into it. Um, but it'll give the axle more room, make me feel more comfortable that way. Um, but then it'll raise this up just a little bit. That way I still have a little bit of clearance um, for the tires, because that's the only thing I'm worried about. I, I'm gonna bring this as low as I can for this trip, um, make just to, enough to clear these. So um, I think an inch will be okay. And we're gonna take this off 
and get this taken care of because I'm tired of of this for the moment. You know, once we have these high travel axles or high angled or whatever you want to call them, um, where they take more more angles, I'll probably keep it at where it was. Um, simply out of the fact that I want to use it for like overlanding, right? So I want it to be reliable um, at the height that it was because I liked where that sat. Had 13 inches of clearance to the subframe. Um, and so I'm going to take this down to like 11 and a half, 12. Um, so as long as it can fit the, fit the tires, it's the only thing I'm worried about. And I'm not going to be turning really sharp. So if it rubs a little bit during turning, totally fine with me. Um, I just, as long as the clear is going straight down the road at this point, I don't really care. <laughs> so, all right, let's do this. It's off. Now it's time to put it back on. Now let's do this. Probably should have done that a long time ago, but you know what? It's done now, so let's go. Okay, we're on the road again. We are gonna see how this goes. Everything feels smooth. Everything feels like it's holding together. I'm, I took a couple sharp turns. There's no binding of the axles or anything. There's no, no shaking when I'm accelerating. Um, nothing. So, you know, let's just hope that this, this does it. I'm going to, I'm just going to continue on driving. Um, hopefully make it to the border today because I need to. <laughs> I'm already a day behind. So, um, road noise isn't bad. Everything's smooth. Driving really well. But we'll see. Okay, so we made it to Idaho Falls. We're at Walmart getting gas. Let's just doing the math. We put 18 and a half gallons in. And we put, it says here, 272. Now I'm running, I'm running 285, 70, 17 tires. So oversized tires, obviously the mile or speedometer and odometer are off um so i just did a quick math from nephi utah to idaho falls it's 296 miles so now i did a detour of about five ish miles um to get some food and now uh filling up right and i wanted to see how far i could go on a tank of gas so with this oversized tires, I was going about 73 miles an hour, according to uh, Gaia GPS. Um, I was I was maintaining right around 72, 73 miles an hour. Coming all the way here from Nephi, I averaged a little over 16 miles a gallon, basically 16 and a quarter mile per gallon, which for me, I'm thinking is pretty dang good. For a ridgeline on these tires is really good with the full load in the back, by the way. Let's hit the road, let's get back on, uh, going and uh, start heading that way. Renegade's doing well thus far and hopefully it stays that way. Renegade's a little thirsty, a little thirsty. Okay, so we ended up at basically 18 gallons okay so it's 271 miles okay so 271 miles now we divide that by 17.9 that gives us just over 15 miles a gallon which to me that's actually i was thinking it was gonna be a lot less than that so that's actually really really good for this trip um, if I can average above 14, I plan for 12. <laughs> so if I can average above 14, I'll be, I'll be spending less money on fuel than I thought, which is really, really good in this case, since I had to repair the truck on the way up. So, all right. Also, my molecular test for COVID to get into Canada is no longer valid. I looked at the, um, requirements and guess what? It is no longer good. Um, because it's supposed to be within 72 hours. So if it's taken at, if I took my test at 11 on Tuesday, 
or we could say on Monday, since that's when I left. If I took it at 11 in the afternoon on Monday, I need to be there by Thursday at 10.59. Okay, so I did not make that because I should have been there today at like 2 o'clock at the latest. Um, so, I went to Walgreens. I went to Walgreens and uh, ended up getting a test scheduled, but it can't get scheduled till Saturday, and it is currently Thursday evening. I'll be hanging out here for a day, take my test Saturday morning and at 11, and then I'll head across the border um, by, the, by uh, mid-afternoon and be into Canada. So I'm a couple days behind, but it is what it is. So let's get after it. All right, guys. Renegade is ready to go. Going to get my COVID test so I can cross that border, and we're going to get on this road. Woke up, it was 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, so it was a little bit chilly, but it uh, wasn't too bad, it wasn't too shabby. Um, yeah, I'm excited to finally get going and get out of the lower 48 and into Alaska. I'm looking forward to working this summer. You guys should come up and see me. It'll be awesome. You know, just waiting. This guy over here, right there. Ooh, getting in his car. That guy. So he just came over and uh, appreciate it, man. If you check out my channel, uh, appreciate you stopping in and recognizing the truck. That was cool. He came over and talked to me for about five minutes about how uh, how modified the truck was and how he's never seen it and stuff. Guys, I'm telling you, man, create your own lane. People appreciate that kind of stuff. You know, there's always going to be haters that are just like, I don't know. I don't know if it's jealousy or if it's just like they just hate when people do th are happy and doing things they like I don't know but you know it's one of those like do something that is different that would inspire people because for one it feels good when they come and talk to you secondly you can tell that it it brings them happiness as well like they actually are like excited about it and they're like wow man this is actually pretty cool you know so um yeah, just get out there, do you, and do something that'll uplift everybody, you know? Uh, but I appreciate it, man. I didn't get your name, uh, but I appreciate you stopping by, checking out the truck, and hopefully you see this video. A little shout out to you. <laughs> so these folks from Canada just pulled up, and they're watching my YouTube channel. <laughs> they're awesome. They're cool. We're going to we're gonna have to start a conversation here with them. So I was just telling them that you were watching my YouTube channel. <laughs> Good people right here. That's awesome. Canadian. So you guys are going to be on YouTube. <laughs> so you got your five minutes of fame, there right? We go. There we go. We are. It's all heading to Canada. Yes, I'm going through, but they're all going, what part of Canada? To Wainwright, Alberta. Wainwright, Alberta. Yep. Good people from there. <laughs> yeah, if you're ever out in that area, come look us up. <laughs> All right. We're going to go. What was that place called? Wait, wait, wait. Bam, you're going go go to go to Banff. Banff? Yeah. Check out Jasper. Banff. You Jasper know what that stands Banff for? Area. Banff, badass motherfucker Absolutely right there. Absolutely yeah. beautiful there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, you know the place. Banff. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Folks, we are headed to Alaska. I'm gonna stop in Great Falls, grab a quick bite of food, and um, fill up, and then hopefully be back on track to make it to where, um, where uh, Grand Prairie today. That's that's the goal. I don't know if I'll make it, but that's the goal. Um, Time-wise, I think I think everything's good to go. Just time. Uh, but yeah, weather's not looking too bad. Looks a little bit cloudy, maybe some flurries. Hopefully uh, nothing too serious. Not too too concerned with the road conditions though. I think it'll be great. So we're gonna stop in Great Falls, get some food, um, and gas up, and then hopefully we'll be on track to make it to Grand Prairie tonight. It's gonna be pushing it, but I think we can do it. Um, it'll be a good day driving though, and it should be exciting, so stay tuned.
hopefully you enjoy. All right, almost to Great Falls. Looks like we're gonna be entering some weather. Should be fun. You know, I am actually pretty excited to see just how well these tires perform in this kind of weather. I know the truck itself performs well. Um, just when driving up here last time, I had Nitto Ridge Grapplers and did fantastic. I'm really interested to know how these Patagonian MTs will hold up in the weather and, and all that. This is delicious. Got a double roadhouse burger. Fries. These are great fries too. Like authentic fries. They're delicious. Well, I just ate at Roadhouse. Kind of, seems like kind of like a hole in the wall. I mean, it's pretty popular, but it seems like more of like a hole in the wall type place. Um, I found it on the way down. I think it's in my other videos, but uh, just had the Roadhouse burger. It was delicious. And uh, I'm sure, I can't remember what I had last time, but I know it was good. That's why I came back. So had a big heavy lunch. Time to get back on this road. But it is what it is, so probably be here for another 30 minutes. Stop and go until I get there, and hopefully, hopefully, they don't require me to pull over and inspect it for an hour or two. That would be dumb. <laughs> but we will find out. 